Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be building an envelope holder with three separate slots for a buddy of mine. The items that I have in front of me, I have half inch by inch and a half for the side spacing in between each section. I have four feet of five and a half inches by half inch so that I can cut that down and do an inch step down for each section. And then I have a piece of three quarter by eight inches for the base, which I'm going to cut down and router. So the first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down the three quarter inch base into the approximate size that I need and then router the edges. That way I can get my measurements off of that as far as spacing for each section and then to cut it down. That's it. I got the basic cuts done. I have it all routed around the edge so it's going to meet up flush on both sides and the back. So all you're going to have is a nice flat section with a little bit of detail from the end grain down to the routered section. Now all I have to do is cut each one of the dividers down to the correct size so it matches up. Give it a good sanding and then start finishing it. So one thing that I'm doing to help ensure that my main divider pieces are the same width as the side pieces that I cut. Even though you measure them, you still have a good chance of actually being 16 32nd of an inch off. And this will save you a little bit of sanding down the road to help line up. I use the actual side piece and I use that to get my spacing on a saw blade. And then after I have the spacing, then I'll run my piece through. And they are virtually an identical duplicate of each other as far as measurements go. So very little sanding will be required after that to get them perfect. Alright, so now I've got everything cut down to size. I mocked it up, make sure everything looks good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sand down all the flat surfaces and the bottoms and tops just to make sure that everything is fully sanded before I assemble it because once I assemble it I won't be able to sand it down very well with reaching in for a two inch gap so doing this first will save me a lot of issues I'm going to sand this down and stain this since this is going to be the base I'll have it fully finished so that it's ready for me to start assembling the rest of the pieces alright so now that I got everything sanded I'm ready to start prepping for stain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these blue shop towels and I'm going to wipe down the wood until there is no sawdust, uh, sanding residue left. That way all the pores are cleared out. I like using the blue shop towels because you can actually see the difference at whether it's clean or not. Once you get that complete you can follow it up with the stain. Now that I have the insides stained with Minwax Red Mahogany, I still need to flip over the inside two pieces to finish staining the other side. All I am getting right now is the hard to reach sections down inside and then I will finish staining the outsides and the top once it's all fully assembled. Now that the divider pieces have been stained, I gave it some time to dry. Now what I'm going to do is apply two coats of wipe on poly just to the insides of these pieces because once I put it together, I won't be able to do it properly and get it sealed correctly. I found that using a wipe on poly first helps to seal the grain and makes finishing that much easier and much nicer. 
Alright guys, so I got a lot done since the last clip that I recorded. So we've got it all finished up on the base. Just the part that's going to be on the inside. And I've got the pieces that I previously recorded of me finishing fully assembled. As you can see down inside, it would be really hard to get everything correctly. So, I got that in there, got it all sanded down. As you can see, you can see how the, the differing of the wood between the end grain is going to look. It's all nice and flush, just need to do some more finished sanding and this will be ready to stain. But what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to attach this piece to here using these uh, trim head screws. They're an eight by an inch and a half. It's just going to be something to help support it down in there. Um, obviously stick through about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Just apply something firm and then I'm going to follow that up with some brad nails just to make sure that everything is as secure as I'd like it to be. So to give you an idea of what I did, I marked on the opposite side of this where a half an inch would be and I drilled in between the middle for some pilot holes. Now they have the pilot holes, I had originally clamped these on to get a couple screws in here already. Now I'm just going to use these holes as pilot holes to actually drill all the way through and then put the screw in. Alright, so it's that time to start putting on the stain. I've got everything all screwed in. Everything sanded down, wiped down with the blue shop towels. Just going to apply the rest of the stain. As you can see, my cornhole project is still in the background. Check out that video if you're interested on how to build a cornhole setup. Here's where you're going to see the nice design effect of the end grains. So here it is all finished being stained. Give you a little bit of a walk around. And all I gotta do is wait for this thing to dry and then I can start finishing it. So I've already got two coats of the wipe on polyurethane. My next step that I have to do is I'm gonna be using 320 grit sandpaper and I'm going to do a very gentle sanding across the surface. What I'm using is a flat piece of wood so that way I don't push too hard in certain areas. As you can see, there's a pretty good gloss here. Alrighty, you could, you could see my reflection quite well. But for how I like my projects, I like it with the good solid clear finish. So after I sand this down, I'm going to wipe it down again, and then I'm going to use this polyurethane full thickness and put on one more coat, which will give me a nice, thick, solid, rich looking finish. Alright, so here's the finished product. I ended up putting on three coats of wipe on polyurethane and one coat of regular polyurethane. Gloss finish. I'll give you a walk around so you can see how this product turned out. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that this video has inspired you to attempt this project yourself. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comments section and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you like projects like this, check out some of my previous projects and subscribe to see more future projects. Thanks for watching this video.